This is a very quick overview of health economics. Economics in a nutshell. Resources are scarce. Needs are unlimited. Therefore, we have to make choices. What we really want to do is maximize benefits and minimize resources. And that really is about efficiency. In healthcare, we need a fair strategy that makes trade-offs between needs and resources available to meet them in healthcare. Economics is about trade-offs. If I have a dollar, I can only spend it once, but opportunities spend, present themselves repeatedly. This is really about opportunity cost. What is opportunity cost? It's the value of foregone benefit which could have been obtained from a resource in its next best alternative use. If I have multiple options before me, I still have to somehow fit them within my budget, no matter how good of a deal each one of those options might be. So the aim is to choose the options within our given set of resources that will ma minimize the opportunities foregone. We can't leave this to chance because the costs, the risks, and the benefits in healthcare are just far too dear. Economic evaluation then is a tool for us to help maximize the health outcomes per resource expended. It's formally defined by Drummond and Stoddard in their 1997 book, which has been updated in the, in the year 2005. They defined it as the comparative analysis of alternative courses of action in terms of both their costs and consequences in order to assist policy decisions. Economic evaluation is not about choosing the cheapest. It is about value for money. It's about choosing within our constraints to maximize the amount of health that we gain. So then health economics really becomes a framework to help healthcare professionals, decision makers or governments to make choices on how to maximize the health of populations given constrained health producing resources. Those constrained resources really are money, time, attention, passion, amongst all the things that we could spend our limited resources on. Health economics really aims to understand the relationship between resources used and health outcomes achieved amongst our alternative options, and it always involves comparing alternatives. So let's look at the different types of economic evaluation. We have four standard types of economic evaluation, and each of these involves an incremental cost per incremental benefit for two or more alternatives. So we have cost minimization analysis, we have cost effectiveness analysis, cost utility analysis, and cost benefit analysis. The two that I've listed at the bottom are not classified as economic evaluations because they're non-comparative. They are not incremental, they're non-comparative analyses. Budget impact analysis and cost of illness studies are two examples of non-comparative analyses which are simply cost analyses. They're not comparative. They're only one small part of the equation. So for each of these four types of formal economic evaluations, I've organized a chart here that just outlines for you what each of them consists of. So a cost minimization analysis really is about the delta C, the difference in costs between the alternatives. And we can do a cost minimization analysis only when the consequences between those alternatives are identical in all respects. So you can imagine that it's very rarely appropriate to do a cost minimization analysis because it is very difficult to prove equivalence amongst the alternatives. Cost effectiveness analysis involves looking at the dollars per consequence but here the consequence is measured in different magnitude of a natural unit. But the natural unit has to be in a common measure amongst all of the alternatives that we're comparing. So a good example is life year gained. So cost effectiveness then is about calculating the ICER, which is the delta C over the delta E for two alternatives. Cost utility analysis is a special form of cost effectiveness analysis where we're valuing the cost in money and we're valuing the consequences as utilities. 
and calculating quality adjusted life years, the quality. And here we actually have a incremental cost utility ratio that's calculated, which is the delta C over the delta quality for the alternatives being compared. The last example here is a cost benefit analysis. And here we value the costs in money and we also value the consequences in the equivalence of dollars. This is very difficult to do, you can imagine. Valuing consequences in the equivalent of dollars. And what we really need to know in order to do so is what is the willingness to pay in a society for the benefits gained. As you can imagine, because of the difficulties of this, of defining the willingness to pay, we very rarely do cost-benefit analyses in healthcare at this time. So let's talk about each of the four types of economic evaluation. First, the cost minimization analysis, the simplest of the two, but also rarely appropriate because we have to be able to show that the consequences are equivalent between the alternatives if we're going to truly revert to a cost minimization analysis. So here we, for a cost minimization analysis, we're simply looking at the delta C between alternatives. And the result is we have a least cost alternative between the um, two alternatives that we've compared. The cost benefit analysis, which we spoke of and which we rarely do in healthcare, what it really tries to do is look at a ratio of costs to benefits where the benefits are valued in monetary terms. And the result will be that you have either calculated a net benefit if you had the if you had known the willingness to pay or a cost benefit ratio. Cost effectiveness analysis is where we're going to focus today, as well as cost utility analysis, which is a special form of cost effectiveness analysis. Cost-effectiveness analysis um, requires that outcomes are measured in natural or physical units. So we'll have a cost per heart attack avoided, for example, or a cost per death avoided. Because we are measuring things in natural units, we can only look at one domain of outcomes at a time, or one type of outcome at a time, and we can only compare alternatives where the same natural unit has been measured. And because of this, cost-effectiveness analysis does not allow us to compare across all options available to us in healthcare, and it is fairly restrictive because we're looking at only one type of outcome at a time. The result of a cost-effectiveness analysis is the ICER, the cost, the delta cost per delta unit of consequence. For example, a, a cost per life year gained. When we're calculating the outcome for a cost-effectiveness analysis, we really need to be clear that we're thinking about incremental cost-effectiveness, not average costs per outcomes. And this is confusing to a lot of people. So I've shown you here first on this slide the average cost-effectiveness ratio for an option B. So if we have a drug B, we can calculate its cost per effect. And that's simply an average cost-effectiveness ratio, ACER. ACER should not be used to compare alternatives, neither should they be used to make decisions. What we are looking for is the incremental cost-effectiveness ratio, the ICER, where we subtract the cost of A from the cost of B on, in the numerator and in the denominator, we look at the delta effectiveness of the two. <clears throat> so when we're calculating an ICER, the cost-effectiveness ratio, what we do is we compare the delta C of the current practice versus the new strategy of interest. <clears throat> and <clears throat> when we're calculating incremental cost-effectiveness ratios, the result can be considered as the price of the additional outcome purchased by switching from current practice to the new strategy. For example, if the ICER is $10,000 per life year gained, that would be the ICER for the alternative that we're considering compared with the next best alternative. If the price is low enough, the new strategy might be considered cost-effective. But here's the catch. What is cost-effective? 